hey guys welcome back to my channel so today i will be talking to you guys about my life as a commuter commuting from atlanta to denver for work as a flight attendant so keep watching this video and we will get right into it all right guys so as you know, I live in Atlanta and I commute to Denver for work because I'm on reserve, which basically means I'm on call. And when I'm on call, I need to be, if they, in the event that they call me for work, I need to be able to um, arrive at the airport in Denver, DIA, within two hours. So I clearly cannot do that being in Atlanta. So I come to Denver have to be in denver at i come at least the night before because my shift is um reserve one which is basically 5 a.m to 5 p.m i know there are no flights to come and get here before 5 a.m but come on the same day if that makes sense so i have to come the night before i am on reserve luckily we have flights in atlanta that leave at as late as 10 p.m so i always take the very last flight which is the 10 p.m flight and then i arrive here however let's get into the crash pad situation so as you guys know i've said it in almost every video that i have a chance to say it i do not like having sorry i'm pulling up my notes so that this video doesn't get long-winded because long-winded videos are annoying but anyways basically any chance i get i will let you guys know that i do not like having roommates but since i'm commuting and i did not get dallas which is where i want it to be i have to figure things out so i ended up looking for crash pads a lot of them were full but i did look on i think there's crash pad 411 there's also facebook facebook groups and you can also ask your fellow classmates if they know any information um, because a lot of us did get um, Denver, Salt Lake City, or San Francisco as the three options. I basically had plenty of people to reach out to as far as like, oh, where are you guys staying? What are you guys doing? Do you guys know of any crash pads? So there were, there were two options of crash pads that I was looking into. There was one, we're just going to call it, we're just going to call... Crash Pad A and Crash Pad B. So Crash Pad A, I'm gonna list off the things that they had. Crash Pad A had 14 people staying in that Crash Pad and there were two bathrooms and it did include a shuttle service. The total altogether for a month would be $350. So that was Crash Pad A. Crash Pad B um, was actually like a newer crash pad and that had, um, it was supposed to fill up to eight people, but it only had four people there. So, you know, if I included myself, it would be five people out of eight. Uh, two bathrooms as well. And no, tra no um, transportation to and from the airport. So that means I would have to figure out my own way. Also with Crash Pad B, um, there was a fee for a mattress type if you wanted like a regular mattress or a memory foam mattress. And then also an extra fee if you wanted um, a top bunk versus a bottom bunk. The top bunk costs more. So Crash Pad B was coming out to $240. And that's with no transportation included. For me personally, I wanted the transportation to be included because I just wanted it to be one flat rate and I don't have to worry about anything else. I didn't want to have to figure out how to get back to and from every day once I land in Denver because I'm gonna be tired. I don't wanna have to wait on an Uber or anything like that. So I reached out to Crash Pad A and Crash Pad A was actually booked up. So Crash Pad A was not an option anymore. So then I went to Crash Pad B. Crash Pad B, they sent me more information. They sent me their like rules for the Crash Pad. 
So one of the rules on Crash Pad B's list was that you only get 20 minutes in the bathroom. Something about that did not sit well with me, especially because I love taking long showers and just taking my time. And not only do I have to take a shower, but I have to put on lotion and I have to do my skincare routine. And in the mornings, I have to do my makeup. So I'm like, that's well past 20 minutes. So I was just like, I don't really know how I feel about that. Um, and plus 20 minutes, and I understand there's other people in there, but then there's also only two restrooms. So it's just like, what happens if we both have to leave at the same time and then I'm waiting on them or they have to wait on me? I just started thinking about that and I was just like, that doesn't really sound like it's gonna be feasible. And I wasn't, I didn't really wanna do that. So, and plus, Crash Bad B also had no transportation there and back. So I actually looked on Uber to see how much it would be to go back and forth from that crash pad to the airport. And it was coming up to $20 minimum, $20 minimum. And the fact that I fly in so late, I knew that the prices were going to hike up. Um, it was going to be a surge. So we're looking at, you know, $40, $50 just to get through this crash pad. So, you know, I was sitting here thinking like, okay, what are you going to do? Like, I was looking at, you know, the agreement for Crash Pad B and I was just like, I really don't want to do this. Like, this does not sound feasible. It sounds like I'm going to go over budget and spend too much. You know, I didn't, I really honestly didn't want to go over spending $350 because that's what I would have spent with Crash Pad A. So I was just like, I don't want to go over $350 a month in terms of commuting and staying somewhere else. So what did I decide ultimately? Y'all, honestly, as I like kept thinking and running it, playing it in my head, I just cannot do the whole roommate thing. And it's, you know, having a roommate versus roommates plural like that's a lot <sighs> I just couldn't but, do it wait 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 wait. before I get started I just know I'm not giving y'all all this tea for y'all not to simply like this video and subscribe to my channel so we can take a minute to go ahead and let y'all do that because So we're going to take a minute to let y'all go ahead and do that. Go ahead and like and subscribe because that is the very least you can do. And plus that lets me know that you like the video and I'll keep posting more content like this if I know that you guys like this video. So please like and subscribe to my channel so that I can keep doing what I do. Keep giving y'all this tea and this free game so that you can go out and be a better well-informed flight attendant than I am. So that's the whole point of this but anyways let's get back to the video so basically i decided not to go with either crash pad because i just did not want to deal with all of that you know the roommates the time bathroom it was just too much like no ma'am no ma'am no ham no turkey i can't do it so i had to went with the hotel option so the hotel option for me, let me just tell you my experience. I am I told myself I'm not gonna spend more than 350 a month. So um, hotels actually offer discounts for flight attendants or people who work for you know different companies. So I booked with one of the hotels here in Denver, got a hotel. I was just under the assumption that I was gonna be given a trip every time i come to denver so at max i would just be stay, spending money for one night every time i came into denver um and they would call me by the time you know before my first reserve day ends so the first day i go out to denver and i stay in a hotel they never called me they did not call me at all 
so I was like oh my god okay day one is over and now we're going into day two and I was like um this might get expensive because I thought they were gonna call me on the first day um by the grace of god i was reaching out to like people on facebook and like just different facebook groups and just seeing did any other flight attendants want to room together um like split the cost of a hotel fee because i don't mind having one person especially if it's very temporary that's fine so i actually was able to get in contact with someone else who was also staying in denver that was willing to split the hotel fee with me so her and i actually got a hotel room together and we split the cost uh once so the second night that i was here in denver i got called for a trip and the trip lasted until the end of my reserve days and then i caught my reserve um and then after my reserve days my reserve time was over at 5 p.m i caught a flight at 6 to fly back to atlanta so Everything ended up working out in my favor, which was great. Now, that was great for the first week. Um, the girl who I was roommates with um, during that time, we just agreed that for the rest of the month, we'll just get together and whenever we are in Denver at the same time and our schedules kind of collide, we'll just get a room and split it together. So me and her we did that for the whole month and that actually worked out great the hotel that we were staying at there was a shuttle service that goes to and from the airport for free and it was pretty much like every 30 minutes so that worked out perfectly for this whole month because now we're at the end of the month i actually spent 200 dollars in total in, in terms of commuting so I'm very happy about that I'm under budget which is great and I didn't have to have a whole bunch of roommates because it's not what I wanted and I didn't have to split you know a restroom with you know 14 people or eight people so I'm super thankful for that unfortunately the roommate that I did have she got based somewhere else and she'll be starting next month in another base so i'm gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna do next month but you know what i honestly feel that god will come through and somebody will you know need a roommate just like i need a roommate and they don't want to stay in a crash pad so we'll just get a hotel together so you know i'm hoping that the same thing will happen again next month so i'll let you guys know how that works out but definitely use your resources you know reach out to classmates join those facebook groups you know reach out to other people because there are other options than to stay in a crash pad with multiple people um i will say that in terms of a crash pad um there are some benefits um hold on let me think of them okay so there are some benefits you know, those roommates, they are they can be your friends, you know, they can be lifelong friends as part of networking and meeting new people. So that's one, you know, you do have a kitchen space where you can um, put food in the refrigerator, put food in the freezer and cook. So that's also another option. And you can also wash clothes because crash pads typically have a washer and dryer. So that's, you know, great perks to having a crash pad for me you know living in a hotel space I have a microwave and a refrigerator so I pretty much keep my meals more plant-based and something easy to cook um and I just make sure I of course don't mess up my uniform and I just keep it clean if if need be there is um dry cleaning a dry cleaning service in my hotel so that works out for me as well but again, it's really up to you and your preference as far as if you want to stay in a crash pad or versus if you want to stay in a hotel. Um, in terms of me splitting with my roommate, I will say that, you know, being on reserve is different for everybody. For me personally, I never stayed in Denver more than two consecutive days. Um, I was always called at least by the second day versus my roommate she's been here for five days 
in a row and hasn't got called. So I do think the situation is different for everybody. Sorry, my camera died. Anyways, as I was saying, which I don't even remember what I was saying. Okay, but anyways, like I was saying, my roommate would be here for her all of her reserve days versus for me, I was getting called on the first day or second day. So it's just different for everybody. I've even had people who were closer to me in seniority who were here for four and five days in a row. That personally has never happened for me. Whether I put call first or not, I'm always called on the first day or the second day. So just definitely be aware of that. Um, but so far, commuting is not bad. I'm thankful for my situation because it's a straight flight to Denver. There are others who have to take two flights to get to Denver. And I don't know how that would work for me. That would make me feel very miserable, taking two flights to get there and two flights to get back. But yeah, so in every situation, I always try to think of like the positive. Um, you know, at least it's just one flight. At least you're a flight attendant, you know? At least you get to travel for work. So just always think about those things because when you spend all that time in training, you don't want to just start getting upset about the smallest things. Like, if this is what you want to do, this is your dream, like, you always have to think back, hey, like, I'm actually living my dream. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a flight attendant, you know? Everything's not going to be 100% perfect, but just make it do what it do. Fly, commute, do, like don't jeopardize the opportunity by trying to come in the day of and trying to leave early when you're on reserve. Like don't do it because you just don't want to jeopardize that. And I could give you guys a story about how I did that. And yeah. But that's a story time for another day because this is getting a little long-winded. But hope you guys enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the content. If you are commuting, let me know if you're in training, if you're a flight attendant. Please talk to me in the comments. I will talk back. And also let me know what you guys would like to see in the future. You know, content. Like, throw me some ideas. Ask me questions. Let's talk, you know? Alright guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye!